and welcome back to using Magia. This is part three. Today we're going to be having a look at customizing your workspace. So in the first two parts of this series we had a look at changing the look and feel of the distribution and then we also looked at adding and removing software and managing software in the last episode. So in this third and final episode we're going to be having a look at customizing the workspace. So changing the way the desktop works and operates to a way that at least suits me more. And I'm also going to be having a look at things like keyboard shortcuts and also integrating online accounts such as Facebook, Twitter and Google etc. So first things first, let's start moving this desktop around. Now the KDE Plasma desktop, like I've said before, is very customizable and you can change the way that it looks and operates. And as we've already seen, we've already changed the way it looks, but it's time to change the way that it functions and kind of change the, the way the desktop paradigm works. So for me, I like a panel on the top of the screen with a global menu in it. Kind of similar to Mac OS X, but it's just the way that I've gotten used to. So that's what we're gonna work towards. So first of all, we're gonna move the panel by clicking on the cashew in the bottom right hand corner. Then we're gonna grab the screen edge and drag it up to the top and you can see we've already moved the panel to the top of the screen. You can shrink it down a bit to, you can shrink it down a bit to the size that you prefer. And then you can see here that we've got the icon only task manager sitting as a widget on the taskbar. Now the way that the KDE panels work, uh, they're very customizable. You can move all of the different elements on them, you can move them around, you can mix them up, you can take stuff off, you can put stuff back on. So for instance, I'm going to remove the icon only task manager because I don't need it. And I'm also going to add the global menu widget. So if I go add widgets and then search for the menu bar, then you can see here it says window menu bar. Drag that into place and you can see then it takes up the panel. So now I've got a global menu sitting there on the panel instead of the icon only task manager. Now, of course, that leaves me with a panel bar without a task manager. So then it would be wise to add another panel to add the task manager on. And that's going to function a bit like a dock. So if I say add an empty panel, it's going to put it down at the bottom of the screen by default. Again, selecting the cashew will allow you to change the screen edge that it sits on. And you can also change the width of the panel by dragging the controls in here from the side. So that suits me about there. And then I'm also going to click on the more settings, set it to auto hide and center it. Now I'm going to add the icon only task manager to that panel. That way I can still switch between my running applications. So now that I have a separate panel or dock managing my tasks and my windows that are open, I can actually add launches to that dock so that even when I don't have an instance of that application running, I can still ask it to show a launcher when it's not running. So even when I click the, out of this window, you can still see the file browser is still there on the dock. And then you can also see when I go into the Dolphin file manager here, you can see I've got the global menu up on top here as well. You can either add applications from the menu or you can add them simply by opening them and then right clicking that option and saying show a launcher when not running. That way you'll get a nice list of frequently used apps as well as all the other windows that may be open on your desktop at the time. Okay, next let's talk about customizing the keyboard shortcuts because this I think is something very important if you want to be productive with any operating system. It's great to have a keyboard driven workflow so you can quickly execute commands and commonly use things without having to lift your hands off the keyboard. So I highly value this in any kind of desktop setup that I use. The good thing with KDE is you can change nearly anything about the keyboard setup. So first of all we're going to go into the run command interface or the K runner launcher. Now you access this by holding Alt F2 on your keyboard and it will bring up this little uh, this little text box here and you pretty much start typing whatever you want to do and it will bring up a suggestion of what you th what it thinks you're trying to achieve. For example if I went to say Chrome then it would show Google Chrome as the web browser and a simple tap of the enter key and I would launch that application. This is the way that I launch most of the stuff that I do so I want to get this in an easily accessible keyboard shortcut that's easy to find and easy to get to no matter what I'm doing. So because of the fact we're going to change the keyboard we just start typing keyboard and you can see global keyboard shortcuts comes up as the second option there. Select that and you've got all the different options here with the KDE Activity Manager, Daemon, the keyboard layout switcher, the hotkeys, the different clipboard apps, lots and lots of different things but the way the ones that we're going to focus on are the run command interface and we're going to change the run command from alt f2 to meta or the windows key and the spacebar 
Uh, for me, this just seems to work. It's a nice simple shortcut that's very easy to find without taking your fingers off the keys. Click OK, and now we've got that tied to that very easy keyboard shortcut. Now something else that's worth customizing is the keyboard shortcut to navigate all of the different workspaces. Because you can see here in KDE we've got different workspaces which are essentially different extensions of the desktop. So you can have, let's say, so you can have a window open on this one, move over to the next one, and open up separate applications on this one as well and jump between the two. So again, going into the keyboard shortcuts, you can customize nearly any keyboard shortcut that KDE has to offer, but in order to in order to customize the different effects between different desktops, then you'll want to go under KWin as that is the compositing or the window manager for KDE. It's all kind of technical, but you can see here, you've got all the different shortcuts lifted, listed down the right hand column and you can change any of those as you so desire. So now that we've got an efficient way to get around the desktop with our keyboard, it's time to get connected with Facebook and Twitter and all of those fun things. So we're gonna go into system settings and go to personal information. Now under personal information here, there's a whole system that KDE has in place so that you can add in your online account details here in this one window and it will talk to all of the different KDE apps that are available on your system. So by clicking add, you can see here you've got a lot of different options and they kind of look a little confusing. But the ones that you're gonna wanna pay special attention to, especially if you have these accounts, are the Facebook, and it says it makes your Facebook data available in KDE, Google Calendars and Tasks, Google Contacts, and also the microblogging accounts such as Twitter. You can also add in things like your email or your business exchange email and KDE will all pretty elegantly handle the, all those different sort of accounts. Then once you've entered in the once you've entered in your account information and you've authenticated it with KDE, then it will bring in things like your contacts, your chat information and make it easy to share photos to the timeline, etc. It's all incredibly useful. And by the time you're done, you should have a very well integrated KDE desktop that's ready to talk to the outside world, especially if you install third party apps like the Twitter app known as Chacock. So finally, here we are at the end of the day with the fully set up Magia 4 KDE desktop. And as you can see, I've got a home folder sitting here on the desktop as a folder view. And I've also got the fuzzy clock and also a now playing widget. Now also one other change that I did make as well was changing out the menu. And that was for the Lancelot menu instead of the traditional uh, KDE menu that comes bundled with Magia. Now again, all of these applets, if they're not showing up in your widget selection, uh, you can see here when you go to add widgets, if it's not showing up, then simply have a look in the package manager like we discussed in the adding software episode. And if you search those particular search terms, then you'll be able to find all of these different widgets in the Magia repositories. And also there is my doc with all the commonly used applications on the side. Things like Facebook chat are tied in as well as I've got my Twitter client also working. So it's a fully integrated social desktop as well as the keyboard navigation is up and running so I can jump between the different workspaces and shift windows around as I so desire. Well, thank you all for watching this series. Definitely, if you enjoyed this series, then definitely leave a comment down below and also like the video if it did help you out. Consider subscribing if you like this sort of content on a regular basis and feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. Details are all down in the description box below. I shall see you all again in the very near future. But until then, peace out, ladies and gentlemen.